an Aunt Bessie. And I don't know if any of you have had an Aunt Bessie or someone like her. But Aunt Bessie gave me the best Christmas presents ever. She had married a man, my Uncle Emerson, who was a, he was into horses, standard bred trotters. And uh, so I used to love to go up there and help him with his chores and help with the horses. And they were in Western New York State. It was almost, Western New York State, they're in Wyoming County. It's about as west as you can get in New York. It literally felt like the, like the west. Not the Midwest, but the west. They're on a wide open bunch of fields and the wind would just scream across in the winter. And they get a lot of lake effect snow up there. They're south of Rochester, east of Buffalo. <laughs> a lot of snow. And, so we wouldn't visit in the winter very often, but when we did, it was pretty intense and scary. But I remember one year, my Aunt Bessie, she got me a real cowboy hat. Not a kid's cowboy hat. I was like eight years old or something, but a real cowboy hat. And I, I just wanted to be a cowboy in the worst way. I wanted a horse. I asked for a horse for Christmas. I did not get a horse. I got a great hat. But Christmas would come and I, I, the change of the time and around about Thanksgiving, there's that moment when all of a sudden you realize it is not fall anymore, it's winter. And you walk out the back door and you look up and the stars are so bright, so sparkling. And the air is crisp and dry and you know snow is coming. And when you're a kid, you just pray for snow. You pray for snow like ah, a horse. And I didn't get a horse. That was okay. I could deal with that. But every year I asked for a drum set. My mom was a second grade teacher and there was no way in hell that there was gonna be a drum set in the same house as her, particularly after a day of teaching second graders. But you know, kids are hopeful. And every year I asked I said, you know, Mom, I want to play the drum in the school band. And she's like, well, they have enough drummers. <laughs> but I think, you know, if you learn to play the flute, you could play in the fife and drum band. I didn't want to play the fife. And I didn't want to play the flute. But in fourth grade, I was the only boy playing the darn flute. And it was also in fourth grade that I made my first public performance. Me and George Jurgen sang Stewball is a Racehorse for the fourth grade talent show, which I'd learned off of a Peter, Paul, and Mary record. And the thing is, my mom really didn't want drums in the house. She was pretty adamant about that. And I was like, well, okay, the flute, well, can I do drums next year? And she's like, how about the piano? Piano is a percussion instrument. My mom was a hypnotist, by the way. If you look inside the piano, she said, there are hammers and they're hitting the strings. That's percussion. So I started taking piano lessons. I never did very well with them because my piano teacher insisted that I try to read the actual music. And I just wanted to make my own stuff up. But I learned to play the piano. And I said, Mom, you know, I'd 
really like to learn to play the drums. And she said, you know, your father's guitar is in the closet and he never plays it. And that's our rhythm instrument, you know. So I started learning to play the guitar. But before all this music thing happened, it was Christmas time. My mom tucked me in, went downstairs, and she put the phonograph needle on the record. We had records in those days. You all remember, except Mike. <laughs> He's been all CDs all his life, this guy. He's the youngest person here. Thank you, Mike, for coming. Well, my mom went downstairs and she put the phonograph needle down on a record of the Robert Rat Wagner Corral or Robert Shaw Corral, Robert somebody Corral. And they started singing songs. And this song started floating up the stairs. And it was sad. There's something sad about Christmas. We know it's not going to end well. We know that the shepherds are out there in the night and the wise men are going to show up. And this little baby, we know he's going to end it on a cross. And so there's something so sad and bittersweet about Christmas. But ultimately, it's all of our story that we are born and we all go back home at some point. When I was eight years old, I was in bed and all I wanted was a horse and a drum and I don't know, maybe it was the little drummer boy that did it, maybe it was Green Sleeves, the Christmas version that did it, or maybe it was this song when she put on a Harry Belafonte album. Mary and the baby hungry Oh, we know what hungry be so we bring them peas and rice and a little ginger tea only pigeon peas and rice a little ginger tea Mary thank God with her Baby, lonely 
rest easy. So we go away and let them be on hush tiptoe with a voice cap low. We look up and see star of hope shining in the sky to mark baby's birth. song was playing and all of a sudden I was standing on my bed and music was coming up my legs and it was coming up my body and it was swirling around and shooting out my fingertips and it was literally this blue light that was just this blue flame shooting out my fingertips and uh, that's when music came in and to me Christmas Christmas is about music. It's about light. It's about the yearning we have as human beings to love each other in spite of how often we hurt each other. And it's about this world that's so beautiful, so magnificent, and so hard. But it's the hard that makes it amazing. Because any creature that doesn't struggle doesn't thrive. Every motivational speaker worth his salt knows the story of the butterfly. If you help a butterfly out of the chrysalis, it doesn't have the struggle that it needs to pump the blood into its wings so that it can inflate those wings and fly. And we're not here to buy a bunch of stuff at Christmas. We're not here to get stuck in the shiny things. We're here to be the shiny things. But it's not. It's not given. It's not out of the box. I'm studying how to grow things, how to, how to grow grass-fed beef. And, and just as I was having my coffee today, I read a paragraph by this farmer out in Missouri. And he said, you know, a baby calf is born with its summer coat. So why are we having calves be born in the winter? Why are we trying to change nature when if we work with nature, it's still hard, but it works better. And I want to challenge us all tonight, my challenge, my meditation throughout this evening is to work with who we are. We are beings of light who are temporarily in these wonderful bodies that hurt sometimes.